Well, welcome back to the Friday Bubble. You'll be pleased to see that it's not just me here this week, but I have Essie back. Um, and boy, am I glad to see you, Essie. It's quite hard work doing these by yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here. You know, it was, it was painful to just watch you do them all, all by yourself oh. on Instagram. So you and, did very well, though. And we have a treat. So Thank today, um, passenger, Comte de Champagne, Long de Blanc. Um, now, I thought it'd be quite fun um, to do a quick comparison, and I'm not sure I've done this recently. Have you done the 12 versus 8? I've not yet done the, the 12 versus 8 uh, um, side since, side. Uh, since this one has been released oh. at the winery, yes. But, uh, but it'll be really interesting because uh, obviously the 12 is super young, young mm -hmm. having just been released. And then the 8 has, uh, has some beautiful bottle age, so let's see. Now, how do the vintages... Um, you and I have talked a lot about 2012. Now, how do they, it's a bit of an exam question, how do they compare and contrast the two vintages? Yeah, well, I think that um, uh, acidity is really the, I think, the key word in the 2008. Uh, it really is an acidity driven year, leaner, fresher, full of sort of um, energy, tension. Um, both are actually September harvests, right. which are very, very rare uh, today. But I think profile-wise, um, the, the, the 12 uh, tastes more like a, like a September harvest. Whereas the, um, the 12 um, is a um, vintage that um, has much lower yields uh, and bigger concentration because of that, because of the uh, significant uh, spring frosts. Right. So even if the summer was rather, rather um, cool, there was a, a heat wave uh, towards the end of it, and there is beautiful richness um, to these wines. So I would expect something a little bit richer uh, from the 2012, but obviously now the, the one being so much younger than the other, will we'll sort of uh, move them, I think, a little bit closer. As wines, uh, the one thing I remember, uh, 12 versus 8, is when the first few 12s came out, we, we always used to talk about their exuberance and how giving they were. Yeah. 8 wasn't though, was it? No, 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 8 is very, very shy. So you know? it'll be interesting today yeah. to just see... Absolutely. Now you gave you a little sneaky... Yes, yes. <laughs> sneaky. Did, did you have some um, exuberant fruit? Yes. <sighs> Oh, well, we're, uh, I love that aromatic. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. There is a little bit of even tropical nuances. Yes. And, and, uh, and Comte's uh, usual, this beautiful toastiness, emerging toastiness, creamy toastiness yeah. uh, coming up. So always uh, coming from the, the, nowadays, all from the five Caracruz right. of, the, of the Côte de Blanc. Mm -hmm. So basically, Crama, Chouy, um, uh, Avis, Auger and Le Menu sur Auger. And normally, um, normally there's a lot of um, of avis and um, many of Roger, but also uh, Tetanger have a lot of vignettes in Shui. So right. those three um, villages are sort of uh, highly represented in the blend. Now the majority of it is um, fermented in stainless steel, but the one thing with Comte that I always think is fascinating is that is it, I think they vary a little bit, but it's usually five percent maybe 6% um, each year, goes into small barrels, doesn't it, for yeah. The fermentation? Yeah, it's actually ageing, not fermentation. Okay. So it's just like a two to four month uh, period in small, relatively new uh, oak barrels, so um, up to four years old. Okay. So this is just to give, you know, one little component of complexity and also maybe boost, um, boost the sort of toastiness at an earlier age mm -hmm. a little bit. And uh, it's apparently uh, mainly right. the shui component. Right. Shui is a bit of a, a little bit richer, rounder, softer mm -hmm. um, uh, crew of the Conte Blanc, and they often put that in the in the oak barrel. Right. The 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 depth, the flavour in the, you know, I've, I've picked up the the aromatics. You've got this lovely pineapple, which I always seem to yeah. find, and then there's these lovely citrusy um, elements to it. Really ripe lemon. Um, quite great fruity actually today. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I love that. There's so much fruit, amazing uh, concentration, but then there is this tingling sensation, this nervosity to the wine. So there's definitely no, you know, no shortness of acidity here either. But it's it's more. I I think the the main character of the wine is that really delicious uh, ripe fruit, beautifully, perfectly ripe fruit. 
the balance just seems, you know, you can't, you can't, um, nothing's dominating. Lots of fruit, lots of freshness. Well, in fact, I think um, this might be my lunchtime wine. <laughs> exactly, and the good thing is that even if it, it was a short year, you know, uh, overall in Champagne, and some producers even didn't make a vintage right. Champagne because they needed all that good material for the, um, for the non-vintages, um, uh, Tetanger made a fair amount of the 12, which is, is good news. Okay, so I think where this hopefully comes into its own a little bit more is um, I, I love the 2012 Compt. I think it's um, it just everything seems in harmony, doesn't it? Mm. Now, 2008, are we going to find, well, what are we going to find? Let's have a little look. Um, so these were marked a bit more by even more vibrant acidity, weren't they? It was a com kind of common... Yeah. Trait. Yeah, and there's some some criticism to the to the vintage as well. Well, it's hugely hyped, of course, but you know, right. some especially winemakers think that it's a little bit too lean, that it's sort of lacking in in body or fleshiness. But uh, let us see. And is that potentially the weather? They didn't perhaps have enough of those lovely warm days, or yeah, exactly, because it was getting very very cool um, right. towards the the end of the ripening. So, oh, that's very different aromatic. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you get so much of this, all these toasted and roasted uh, aromas. Lovely, delicious, uh, like roasted almonds type of uh, thing. Now, of course, the disgorgement time plays mm. um, a large part of this. And the 2008 will have had more than two years more, obviously, post-disgorgement time. So mm. that's definitely giving that lovely toast, isn't it? Oh, wow. I love the palate. Stunning. Mm. It's starting to gain a little bit of that gravitas, right. that, uh, that uh, like wininess or, or oiliness more than it had before. I was before. going to say the oiliness, it's, yeah. it's really distinguished, isn't it? Like to, turning towards a bit Burgundian. Right, yeah. yeah. And very, very toasty, very sleek, uh, very dynamic, agile, sort of very going places. I really love it. But fruit-wise, they are quite different because tropicalness is um, a signature of the Twelve. I'm not really picking up. I'm picking up some sort of grapefruit and really ripe lemon, but I'm not getting so much of the, the, the really ripe fruit in there. No, no, no. Normally in the 08s, you seldom would get tropical fruits. It's more on the stone fruit, uh, lemon, citrus fruit profile. So where do you think, um, what gives you more pleasure today? Well, you know, I, I love where the, the 12 right. is Let going, go but you know, of course, today the... the um, uh, the the 08 is just starting to show all its all its grandeur, so it's stunning. So we've comped in these really strong years. Obviously, they've had twelve now. Um, eight was was before that. Um, they've had seven and six again came mm. together. Um, then five, four, and two. So they had a run of actually some quite incredible vintages. Yeah, exactly. It's been it's been really amazing. Actually, last weekend I was tasting a, a, a mini vertical of Comte, and I must say that the two thousand is amazing. Okay. Really, the almost like the wine of the vintage, the champagne of the vintage. And then, uh, then I love personally the, the two thousand and four for its sort of yes. lightness and ethanol character. Uh -huh. But I must say, say also that the Comte uh, two thousand and six is fabulous. Yes. I'm not a huge fan of 2006's overall, yes. but that has that lovely richness and uh, beautiful toast to it. It has a lovely salinity, the 6, as well, doesn't mm. it? That sort of really um, beautiful freshness to it. Yeah. Um, now, tell me a little bit um, about the difference with Comte in bottle and Comte in our favourite size. <laughs> Comte in Magnum is always quite different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... Yes, luckily they are producing more and more of them. Comte in Magnum, it's just uh, stunning, stunning. Well, it really shows the Magnum effect, all that uh, toast. I mean, these are always reductive in the winemaking, but right. they have that beautiful, beautiful reductive um, um, toast in the Magnums. So, so let's have um, our favourite one. I'm actually going with 12 today. Cheers with you. So 12 and 8. Thank you very much, Essie. It's wonderful to have you back. And happy Friday, everybody.